Hi guys, uh, the notification for National Exit Test Regulations 2022 has come two days before the new year and my inbox is full with large number of messages but uh, before I try to answer each one of these, let's actually look at the notification per se. Uh, this would serve as a licentiate exam, a single exam to certify the eligibility of a medical graduate to register and practice the modern system of medicine in our country. And then more importantly would be step one where your raw score that would be calculated would be serving as a benchmark for admission to various courses. Uh, overall next would be two steps that you are familiar with. Step one is going to be a theoretical examination. Anybody who's completed uh, their final year MBBS would be eligible for it. And uh, let's look at how many papers would you have to go through? What are the subjects which are to be started? In fact, the entire medical curriculum would remain the same. Diseases would remain the same. So my request to you would be that, uh, yes, I mean, you know, names of certain subjects would be prominent, but then all of them are important. All 19 of them are important. You need to get a bird's eye view of all the 19 subjects so that you can get questions of particular subjects, right? So it's not about what is more important, what is less important. Uh, the basic fundamentals, anatomy, biochemistry, physiology would still remain the same. You still need to study pathology to understand aspects related to medicine and surgery and obviously obstetrics and gynecology. And uh, well, I would say the three uh, days, or it's, uh, the exam is step one is spread about five days, but these three days would be the most three critical three days of your life where you would be having two sessions where on day one, you'll be doing medicine and pediatrics. Then after one day off, you'll be doing surgery, allied subjects and ENT. And then on the third day, you'll be doing OBGY and ophthalmology. In the first morning session, you would be handling 120 questions. The duration would be about three hours. And then you get a break of two hours. And then subsequently for pediatrics, ENT, ophthal, you get one and a half hour each. And that would be 60 questions. So let's uh, in this computer based board, I mean, the only I would say problematic issue is that uh, uh, it was 50% in each subject that would be required. Now, as far as the performance statistics are concerned, these, as I said, three days are going to be make or break. So uh, the hours of the grind, as I can call it, would be 4.5 hours because I said the three hours for the initial like medicine and allied subjects and then one and a half hour for pediatrics. That will make it 4.5 hours into three days is 810 minutes. And uh, then MCQs to be solved per day would be 180. The total of 540 MCQs to be sorted, uh, 180 per day. And time allotted on that particular day would be three hours plus one and a half hours. That's four and a half hours. That's 270 minutes. So if I look at how much time will I get per MCQ, that would be standard, you know, routinely currently also you're getting about one minute. Now the time would be relatively more, but I understand it's a tall order to focus for these many number of days and go through such large number of questions. So yes, but you guys are a talented lot and you will definitely be able to pull through this. Uh, as far as the distribution of items and knowledge level of questions is concerned, clinical vignettes would constitute 65%, comprehension type would be 25%, and the recoil type would be another 10%, adding up to 100%. And uh, when it comes to the competency part, what they've said is that though the passing score in step one is 50%, must know category would be 60%, nice to know, I mean, some difficult aspects, that would be 30%. And may know, I mean, rare syndromes, etc., which you really don't need to bother about because that's not going to affect uh, either your performance as a doctor and either is going to affect uh, your entrance into any course of your choice. Uh, may know 10%, you can let it go. Now, as far as community health is concerned, it's very, very important and it would be incorporated into all the subjects as you can see in the highlighted part. Similarly, when it comes to subjects like anatomy, biochemistry, physiology, which form the very fundamental, as I said, I mean, nobody can become a doctor without reading them. And then pathology, pharmacology, which form the core, uh, they would again be added to the relevant subjects that are going to be evaluated. So you need to have a bird's eye view of all the 19 subjects and not focus on only few particular subjects per se. When it comes to next step two, uh, the additional point that you will notice is that apart from medicine, surgery, OBGY, pediatrics, ENT, ophthal, orthopedics is present uh, with physical medicine and rehabilitation. And in step two, it would be more of uh, OCSC, case-based discussion, viva voice. And uh, in step two, the candidate would only be declared as pass or fail. Whereas in next step one, a raw score would be given, which will form the basis for entrance or eligibility for various uh, postgraduate courses. So the name of the exam would change the way or methodology of asking questions on topics would change, but I can say the disease process is still the same. 
pathogenesis of disease is still the same the treatment part would still remain the same so you need to focus on core fundamental concepts and preplatter q bank is well aligned to handle the current pattern subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from preplatter